time is a measure in which events can be ordered from the past through the present into the future, and also the measure of durations of events and the intervals between them. Time is often referred to as the fourth dimension, along with the three spatial dimensions. Time has long been a major subject of study in religion, philosophy, and science but defining it in a manner applicable to all fields without circularity has consistently eluded scholars. Nevertheless, diverse fields such as business, industry, sports, the sciences, and the performing arts all incorporate some notion of time into their respective measuring systems. Some simple definitions of time include time is what clocks measure, which is a problematically vague and self-referential definition that utilizes the device used to measure the subject as the definition of the subject, and time is what keeps everything from happening at once which is without substantive meaning in the absence of the definition of simultaneity in the context of the limitations of human sensation, observation of events, and the perception of such events. Two contrasting viewpoints on time divide many prominent philosophers. One view is that time is part of the fundamental structure of the universe, a dimension independent of events, in which events occur in sequence. Sir Isaac Newton subscribed to this realist view, and hence it is sometimes referred to as Newtonian time. The opposing view is that time does not refer to any kind of container that events and objects move through, nor to any entity that flows, but that it is instead part of a fundamental intellectual structure within which humans sequence and compare events. This second view, in the tradition of Gottfried Leibniz and Immanuel Kant, holds that time is neither an event nor a thing, and thus is not itself measurable nor can it be travelled. Time is one of the seven fundamental physical quantities in both the international system of units and international system of quantities. Time is used to define other quantities, such as velocity, so defining time in terms of such quantities would result in circularity of definition, an operational definition of time, wherein one says that observing a certain number of repetitions of one or another standard cyclical event constitutes one standard unit, such as the second is highly useful in the conducts of both advanced experiments and everyday affairs of life. The operational definition leaves aside the question whether there is something called time, apart from the counting activity just mentioned, that flows and that can be measured. Investigations of a single continuum called space-time bring questions about space into questions about time, questions that have their roots in the works of early students of natural philosophy. Furthermore, it may be that there is a subjective component to time, but whether or not time itself is felt as a sensation, or as a judgment, is a matter of debate. Temporal measurement has occupied scientists and technologists and was a prime motivation in navigation and astronomy. Periodic events and periodic motion have long served as standards for units of time. Examples include the apparent motion of the sun across the sky, the phases of the moon, the swing of a pendulum, and the beat of a heart. Currently, the international unit of time, the second, is defined by measuring the electronic transition frequency of cesium atoms. Time is also of significant social importance, having economic value as well as personal value, due to an awareness of the limited time in each day and in human lifespans. Temporal measurement and history Temporal measurement chronometry, takes two distinct period forms. The calendar, a mathematical tool for organizing intervals of time, and the clock, a physical mechanism that counts the passage of time. In day-to-day -day life, the clock is consulted for periods less than a day, the calendar, for periods longer than a day. Increasingly, personal electronic devices display both calendars and clocks simultaneously. The number that marks the occurrence of a specified event as to hour or date is obtained by counting from a fiducial epoch, a central reference point. 
History of the calendar artifacts from the Paleolithic suggest that the moon was used to reckon time as early as 6,000 years ago. Lunar calendars were among the first to appear, either 12 or 13 lunar months, without intercalation to add days or months to some years. Seasons quickly drift in a calendar based solely on 12 lunar months. Lunisolar calendars have a 13th month added to some years to make up for the difference between a full year and a year of just 12 lunar months. The numbers 12 and 13 came to feature prominently in many cultures, at least partly due to this relationship of months to years. The reforms of Julius Caesar in 45 BC put the Roman world on a solar calendar. This Julian calendar was faulty in that its intercalation still allowed the astronomical solstices and equinoxes to advance against it by about 11 minutes per year. Pope Gregory XIII introduced a correction in 1582. The Gregorian calendar was only slowly adopted by different nations over a period of centuries but it is now the most commonly used calendar around the world, by far. History of time measurement devices A large variety of devices has been invented to measure time. The study of these devices is called horology. An Egyptian device that dates to c. 1500 BC, similar in shape to a bent T-square, measured the passage of time from the shadow cast by its crossbar on a non-linear rule. The T was orientated eastward in the mornings. At noon, the device was turned around so that it could cast its shadow in the evening direction. A sundial uses a gnomon to cast a shadow on a set of markings calibrated to the hour. The position of the shadow marks the hour in local time. The most precise timekeeping device of the ancient world was the water clock, or clepsydra, one of which was found in the tomb of Egyptian pharaoh Amenhotep I. They could be used to measure the hours even at night, but required manual upkeep to replenish the flow of water. The ancient Greeks and the people from Chaldi regularly maintained timekeeping records as an essential part of their astronomical observations. Arab inventors and engineers in particular made improvements on the use of water clocks up to the Middle Ages. In the 11th century, Chinese inventors and engineers invented the first mechanical clocks driven by an escapement mechanism. The hourglass uses the flow of sand to measure the flow of time. They were used in navigation. Ferdinand Magellan used 18 glasses on each ship for his circumnavigation of the globe. Incense sticks and candles were, and are, commonly used to measure time in temples and churches across the globe. Water clocks, and later, mechanical clocks, were used to mark the events of the abbeys and monasteries of the Middle Ages. Richard of Wallingford, abbot of St. Albans Abbey, famously built a mechanical clock as an astronomical aurea about 1330. Great advances in accurate timekeeping were made by Galileo Galilei and especially Christian Huygens with the invention of pendulum-driven clocks. The English word clock probably comes from the Middle Dutch word clock which, in turn, derives from the medieval Latin word clocker, which ultimately derives from Celtic and is cognate with French, Latin, and German words that mean bell. The passage of the hours at sea were marked by bells, and denoted the time. The hours were marked by bells in abbeys as well as at sea. Clocks can range from watches, to more exotic varieties such as the clock of the long now. They can be driven by a variety of means, including gravity, springs, and various forms of electrical power, and regulated by a variety of means such as a pendulum. A chronometer is a portable timekeeper that meets certain precision standards. Initially, the term was used to refer to the marine chronometer, a timepiece used to determine longitude by means of celestial navigation, a precision firstly achieved by John Harrison. More recently, the term has also been applied to the chronometer watch, a watch that meets precision standards set by the Swiss agency COSC. The most accurate timekeeping devices are atomic clocks, which are accurate to seconds in many millions of years, and are used to calibrate other clocks and timekeeping instruments. 
Atomic clocks use the frequency of electronic transitions in certain atoms to measure the second. One of the most common atoms used is cesium. Most modern atomic clocks probe cesium with microwaves to determine the frequency of these electron vibrations. Since 1967, the International System of Measurements bases its unit of time, the second, on the properties of cesium atoms. SI defines the second as 9,192,631,770 cycles of the radiation that corresponds to the transition between two electron spin energy levels of the ground state of the 133 Cs atom. Today, the global positioning system in coordination with the network time protocol can be used to synchronize timekeeping systems across the globe. In medieval philosophical writings, the atom was a unit of time referred to as the smallest possible division of time. The earliest known occurrence in English is in Berkfeth's Enchiridion of 1010 to 1012, where it was defined as 1 564th of a momentum, and thus equal to 15 94ths of a second. It was used in the computers, the process of calculating the date of Easter. As of May 2010, update, the smallest time interval uncertainty in direct measurements is on the order of 12 attoseconds about 3.7 times 1026 Planck times. List of units definitions and standards. The SI base unit for time is the SI second. The International System of Quantities, which incorporates the SI, also defines larger units of time equal to fixed integer multiples of one second, such as the minute, hour and day. These are not part of the SI, but may be used alongside the SI. Other units of time such as the month and the year are not equal to fixed multiples of 1s, and instead exhibit significant variations in duration. The official SI definition of the second is as follows. The second is the duration of 9,192,631,770 periods of the radiation corresponding to the transition between the two hyperfine levels of the ground, state of the cesium-133 atom. At its 1997 meeting, the CIPM affirmed that this definition refers to a cesium atom in its ground state at a temperature of 0 K. Previous to 1967, the second was defined as the fraction 131,556, 925.9747 of the tropical year for 1900 January 0 at 12 hours ephemeris time. The current definition of the second, coupled with the current definition of the meter, is based on the special theory of relativity which affirms our space-time to be a Minkowski space. World time, timekeeping is so critical to the functioning of modern societies that it is coordinated at an international level. The basis for scientific time is a continuous count of seconds based on atomic clocks around the world, known as the International Atomic Time. Other scientific time standards include terrestrial time and barycentric dynamical time. Coordinated universal time is the basis for modern civil time. Since 1 January 1972, it has been defined to follow tie with an exact offset of an integer number of seconds, changing only when a leap second is added to keep clock time synchronized with the rotation of the Earth. In Tyre and UTC systems, the duration of a second is constant, as it is defined by the unchanging transition period of the cesium atom. Greenwich Mean Time is an older standard, adopted starting with British Railways in 1847, using telescopes instead of atomic clocks. GMT was calibrated to the mean solar time at the Royal Observatory, Greenwich in the UK. Universal time is the modern term for the international telescope-based system, adopted to replace Greenwich Mean Time in 1928 by the International Astronomical Union. Observations at the Greenwich Observatory itself ceased in 1954, though the location is still used as the basis for the coordinate system, because the rotational period of Earth is not perfectly constant. 
the duration of a second would vary if calibrated to a telescope-based standard like GMT or UT, in which a second was defined as a fraction of a day, or year. The terms, GMT, and, Greenwich Mean Time, are sometimes used informally to refer to UT or UTC. The Global Positioning System also broadcasts a very precise time signal worldwide, along with instructions for converting GPS time to UTC. Earth is split up into a number of time zones. Most time zones are exactly one hour apart, and by convention compute their local time as an offset from UTC or GMT. In many locations these offsets vary twice yearly due to daylight saving time transitions. Time conversions These conversions are accurate at the millisecond level for time systems involving Earth rotation. Conversions between atomic time systems are accurate at the microsecond level. Definitions LS equals TI, UTC equals leap seconds from HTTP colon slash slash Maya dot US endo dot Navy dot mil slash sir seven slash TI dash uch dot at DUT1 equals UT1 UTC from HTTP colon slash slash Maya dot US endo dot Navy dot mil slash sir seven slash sir seven dot dat or HTTP colon slash slash Maya dot US endo dot Navy dot mil slash search slash search dot HTML. Sidereal time. Sidereal time is the measurement of time relative to a distant star. It is used in astronomy to predict when a star will be overhead. Due to the orbit of the Earth around the Sun a sidereal day is about four minutes less than a solar day. Chronology Another form of time measurement consists of studying the past. Events in the past can be ordered in a sequence, and can be put into chronological groups. One of the most important systems of periodization is the geologic time scale, which is a system of periodizing the events that shape the Earth and its life. Chronology, periodization, and interpretation of the past are together known as the study of history. Timeline concepts. Terminology The term time is generally used for many close but different concepts, including instant as an object, one point on the time axis. Being an object, it has no value. Time interval as an object, part of the time axis limited by two instants. Being an object, it has no value. Date as a quantity characterizing an instant. As a quantity, it has a value which may be expressed in a variety of ways, for example, the 26th of April 2014 T09423675 in ISO standard format, or more colloquially such as today, 9.42 a.m. Duration as a quantity characterizing a time interval. As a quantity, it has a value, such as a number of minutes, or may be described in terms of the quantities of its beginning and end. Religion, linear and cyclical time Ancient cultures such as Incan, Mayan, Hopi, and other Native American tribes, plus the Babylonians, ancient Greeks, Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and others, have a concept of a wheel of time. They regard time as cyclical and quantic, consisting of repeating ages that happen to every being of the universe between birth and extinction. In general, the Islamic and Judeo-Christian worldview regards time as linear and directional, beginning with the act of creation by God. The traditional Christian view sees time ending, teleologically, with the eschatological end of the present order of things, the end time. In the Old Testament book Ecclesiastes, traditionally ascribed to Solomon, time zeman is often translated was traditionally regarded as a medium for the passage of predestined events. Time in Greek mythology The Greek language denotes two distinct principles, Cronus and Kairos. The former refers to numeric, or chronological, time. The latter, literally, the right or opportune moment, relates specifically to metaphysical or divine time. In theology, kairos is qualitative, as opposed to quantitative. In Greek mythology, Cronus is identified as the personification of time. His name in Greek means time, and is alternatively spelled Cronus or Cronus. 
Cronus is usually portrayed as an old, wise man with a long, grey beard, such as Father Time. Some English words whose etymological root is Cronus, Cronus include chronology, chronometer, chronic, anachronism, synchronize, and chronicle. Time in Kabbalah according to Kabbalists, time is a paradox and an illusion. Both the future and the past are recognized to be simultaneously present.